Cowboys Nation, you're going to love this. Tony Romo practiced for the first time since breaking his left collarbone September 20th. He remains on the injured reserve designated to return list and can play until November 22nd against the Dolphins. But Wednesday was the first day he was eligible to return to practice under league rules. Romo took part in pat and go and warm ups, worked through some individual drills and through passes during the routes on air potion, uh, portion of practice. Oh, Skip. Oh, Molly. Your thoughts. My thoughts. Stephen A. Smith. I hate to admit this publicly, but I am starting to fear that Jerry Jones blew this Cowboys season. Early on, as we all know, Jerry Jones had two big decisions to make. Game one, Des Bryant, fractured foot. What are you going to do with Des? It's called the Jones fracture, not Jerry Jones, but it's the same one that a Kevin Durant has gone through and needed two more procedures to finally get it right. It's a dicey surgery with iffy results. So what do you do with Dez? Do you put him on that designated to return list where he can't come back until November 22nd at Miami? Nope. Jerry Jones says let's keep him on the active roster. Let's lose a spot because Dez obviously can't play for a while in hopes that a minor miracle will occur and Dez will come back way prematurely. And he has. So far, so good. I'm not sure it's going to last. Now, week two, Tony Romo. Broken left collarbone, again, second time, 2010, first time. What are we going to do with Tony Romo? Oh, he doesn't really need surgery, so they're just going to let it heal. It's not that bad. It's actually best case scenario. It's not too bad. It's just a slight crack. So what are we going to do, Jerry? Uh, let's put him on the designated to return list, which means he is ineligible to play all the way until November 22nd at the Dolphins. What? So. I'm thinking that Jerry overplayed his hand here. I'm thinking that Jerry decided, I really like Brandon Whedon because he talked about how beautifully he can throw yeah. the football. And he did go get Matt Castle as a little insurance. And I think Jerry thought this football team is so good or would be so good that maybe they could beat Atlanta. Maybe they could go win at New Orleans. Who knows, maybe when the Giants come to Jerry World, I mean, I'm sorry, the other way around, back, mm -hmm. go, go to the Giants. Jerry's thinking, maybe we can go steal that game. Then maybe we could beat the Eagles at home, go win at Tampa. And obviously, Jerry's thinking, I'm guessing, that by the time Romo does return November 22nd, they'd still be in first place. Has not happened. Five straight losses have happened. We saw just stay off the weed in, and then we saw from the castle back to the outhouse instead of the other way around. And I, I'm thinking that Jerry looked at an offensive line that is absolutely loaded. Um, I just read a piece uh, on ESPN.com. It was a pro football focus, ranking the best blockers in pro football. And three of the top eight are Dallas Cowboys. Three of the best blockers. Center, Travis Frederick. Then you go to the left guard, Lyle Collins, the rookie, yep. and Ty Smith. They're, they're saying that three at their positions, they're the three best. So I think Jerry's looking at that saying, we don't really need Tony Romo. We're going to be okay. Let's make sure. Let's save us from ourselves. We don't want to rush Tony back, but they do want to rush Des back? I, I don't get it. I, I'm looking at Tony throwing. Obviously, I'm desperate because I've lost five straight games. And I'm looking at Romo as, as please save us, Tony. And he can't. He, he can go out and throw. He was eligible to practice. But he can't play a lick for three more games until the third game from now. And by then, as we all know, could they lose to the Eagles? Well, you guys think that they will. And then could they go lose to Jameis and company down in Tampa? Sure, they could. So then what would happen? They'd be done, right? They would be done. There'd be no hope for them. So I think Jerry made a mistake. If you want to put Dez on that list, I'm fine with that. Do not put Tony on that list because he looks just fine to me. Your thoughts? Breathe. Well, that's what Cap's doing, Kaepernick. Need a chance to breathe, Skip. right? Yeah. Skip Bayless? I can't hear you. Are you saying, Skip Bayless, that you believe that Jerry Jones was being excessive in his protection, is in, in his protecting Tony Romo? I just said that. Don't yes, I did. Are you saying that that surprises you? It, it, it disappoints me. It, it infuriates oh, me. Oh, it disappoints yes. you. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So let's see. So when he ran DeMarco Murray into the ground by giving him 392 oh, here we go. Uh, carries yep. along with 449 overall touches last year that, 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 to protect Tony Romo, 
No, 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 you didn't think about it then. You didn't think about it then. When he sat up there and spent all that money on the offensive line and drafting the Zach Martin, the Travis Fredericks, Doug Lee of the world, people like that, you understand? You didn't catch on to it then. Mm. But suddenly, you know what I'm saying? When he threw DeMarco Murray after he used him up and then threw him out like he was a piece of trash, okay? And and now that he protected Tony Roma by putting him on the list and, and not making him eligible to play until November 22nd, suddenly you're surprised by this? Mm. It doesn't surprise me, Skip Bayless. This is par for the course. This is why the Dallas, are, Dallas Cowboys are who they are. It's about Tony Roma because Lord knows the sun shines and sets with Tony Roma. We got T.L. T.L. Terrell Owens crying because that's my quarterback. Quarterback. That's my teammate and all of that stuff. And he was maligned for it. Tried to sit up there and suck up to Tony Romo and do what he could to sit up there and massage his fragile ego. We got Jason Witten protecting him at all costs, okay? We've got DeMarco Murray being ran into the ground. We've got the team invested in the offensive line. We got Des Bryant sitting there to go out there and play, find a way to get it done. But Tony Romo, look, look, we don't need you to really stress yourself. Oh, by the way, in the offseason, last year before before last season wasn't he out there with at duke shooting jump shots hanging out with the folks at cameron indoor stadium and doing all of this Gratuitous. other stuff what i'm trying to say to you is you could sit up there and say what you want but there are historical remnants of evidence all over the place how it's about tony romo and then everybody else oh. when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys because he is massaged. He is, he is he, he, he soft-soaked, okay? He's coddled. He's all of this other stuff. I'm surprised that Jerry Jones hasn't arranged for him to have daily manicures and pedicures, for mm. crying out loud. This is Tony Romo that we're talking about. This is nothing new. This is no surprise. He's Tony Romo. The sun shines and sets with them. That's the other sun that Jerry Jones never had, okay? This is this is who he is. He's he's not a player for Jerry Jones. He's family. He's somebody that Jerry Jones loves so much. I promise you. I promise you. On off days, Jer Tony Rumble's probably chilling at Jerry Jones' house, just chilling out, having a ball. No. Because this is what happens. No. There's Tony Romo. And then there's the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo just happens to be a very nice guy. Mm. So we don't hear about it that much. But definitely, definitely, this dude is soft-soaked big time. So okay. I don't know why you're acting surprised. I, you I'm know this. You're surprised. just acting like you don't. I'm telling you, well, you, you, my logic eludes you as usual here. You're completely <laughs> missing my point. Maybe because you're devoid and of do, do you logic. you remember what happened in the offseason when... On Jerry's private plane, Tony Romo turned to him and said, Jerry, we're not getting any younger here. Tony Romo is getting up there in age. The window is closing on him and maybe this football I team agree. as far as he is concerned. I agree. So this I was agree. a big deal this year to max out your opportunities. I've told you again and again, if this team so much as ekes into the the last playoff spot in the NFC, look out above. Look out NFC, because if this team is healthy at that point, it will be the best team in the NFC, and it will roll on the road through the playoffs, because we know it is a much better road team than a home team. So my point is, Jerry missed the boat here. If he had just kept Tony on the active roster, he's not babying him. He's, he's not trying to, to candy coat the situation. Really? He's, no, he's not. Really? He's just saying he, he thought that it would take Tony that long to get right and tony looks pretty right like i'm i'm sure tony if it were his choice did he, would play this week against the eagles i bet he, he would say think, i could do this did he did he think it would take that long for tony romo to get right or did he adopt the mentality look let's make sure under all possible circumstances that Tony Romo is completely taken care of. We don't want anything to happen to Tony Romo. Des Bryant, just go out there, figure it out, figure it out. Mm. DeMarco Murray, just go to another team. But, but you, Tony Romo, please, we, we have to make nope. sure he's okay. No, nope. he just you thought sure that, that Brandon Whedon could win three games. That's what he thought. Okay. And guess okay. what? Ain't okay. happening. And it might hurt him. He yeah. was the only one. Mm. He was the only one. Philly favored by two and a half in that one. Up next, we move on to another team who is killing it. After the break, Cardinals star receiver Larry Fitzgerald.